assessment in the exam is about how to use know how to use a value stream to design develop and transition new services so the focus here on the new services on the right side we have know how to use a value stream to provide user support well there could be several value streams in an organization we're going to focus only on the steps required to design new services and the steps required to provide user support because these are usually the two main types of services uh, in an organization and that's why along with the value streams have to understand how these practices help for the contribution towards a new service whenever a new service is created and delivered service design deployment management service validation and testing software development and management release management and change enablement these are the five uh, uh, six uh, different practices which are used okay what is a value stream before we go into these theory here i would like to bring up some examples and because at the foundation level you might have gone through some understanding of the value stream traditionally the value streams have come from areas like manufacturing and other disciplines for example fulfilling a customer's order for a new vehicle if you are ordering a new vehicle you go to a dealership and ask them they give you a test drive then you fill in some papers if you are interested and then you pay some money and they arrange for the vehicle to be sent to you in a nicely packaged um, manner similarly admit admitting a patient to a hospital is another example of a value stream everything that happens from the moment a patient comes into a hospital until the time the patient is delivered from the hospital it's a uh, one value stream diagnosing a walk-in patient so this is the admission whereas this is diagnose diagnosing a walk-in patient not really getting admitted into the hospital so everything so there may be different departments so when the first when you take this first one here there may be several departments in the car dealership several people who are involved who are involved in processing the customer's request or the user's request and each one of them may have their own procedures for example they may be a test drive procedure they may be um, for example a form for, to be filled in before a test drive with insurance etc there may be a procedure for uh, making the payment and um, paying cash credit card etc yeah. and there is a procedure for shipping the vehicle to the user uh, at a certain time and location and uh, so while each one of them have their own process steps but until all of them contribute together collaborate the value stream is not completed so that's how we are going to understand today how a value stream works within an organization particularly a service provider organization to create a new service and to support a new service and there may be many other value streams like the one above these are it specific value streams so we're going to cover this one and to respond to a user request we're going to cover this kind of a value stream also today these two look at the other types of value streams to upgrade an existing application to retire a software service to build a standard specification it site if you're making a facilities maybe one floor to uh, deploy a network and some systems so that people can start working it's another type of value stream there may be people coming from the network side people coming from the the user desk support and so on and from other areas uh, inspection people etc who make sure the site is ready as per required uh, policies as well as required technical specifications okay give me a moment while we move on to the next uh, slide and another example if you go to manufacturing this is how it originated uh, in manufacturing maybe as long as early as the 1960s from toyota from their production systems where they have uh, invented lean and concepts like value stream maps but this is a value stream map in a manufacturing uh, production floor where a customer has made a request to uh, for something and uh, the supplier begin certain processes a b c and then ships it to the customer there is a lot of production control so a value stream map depicts information flows and material flows and there are there's a lot of uh, detail around value streams though for the cds exam we don't have to really know um, all these detailed uh, concepts uh, how to prepare a value stream and the various elements of a value stream but at a superficial level you should know it 
because value stream mapping is a separate specialization on its own which is usually taught in the lean uh, programs training and certifications program but a sufficient uh, depth of uh, value stream mapping should also be understood for example we look at concepts like what is cycle time what is lead time wait time yeah uh, work in progress and so on Therefore, a value stream based on our understanding with some examples earlier, it can mention one, some or all value chain activities. Remember the value chain activities like engage, plan, improve, obtain, build, design, transition, deliver, support. These were the six service value chain activities. Therefore, a single value stream, for example, to create a new product or a service, it may use either all of those activities or maybe few of those activities therefore creating a new service let's say may use three or four of those six activities on the other hand providing support to a user may use maybe two three four or five of those activities so there's a difference between how each value stream uses a subset of those six activities and the value chain activities may be repeated it's not that engage happens only once in one value stream it can happen several times and however an important thing is every value streams begins with a demand and ends with a value so for example when a customer makes a request for a new service it's a demand and the when the product or the service is delivered to the customer it's the and they start using it and they see value in it then it ends with that value and value stream may involve many ITIL value chain activities so we already seen that in the first point and there can be looping of a single value stream activity for example deliver and support can happen again and again for example in incident management that could happen however value streams work, must work within the constraints and policies it's not a free form for everyone while engaging with the user there may be certain policies to adhere to while uh, delivering and supporting a service there may be certain procedures principles certain constraints maybe resource constraints or time constraints like service level agreement to be adhered to therefore value stream must consider all those aspects and when we look at repetition you know the point about looping around or repetition then devops we look at devops a little bit today though we covered it earlier slightly and like ci cd but we're going to look at once again um, briefly in devops we have got a lot of automation and a lot of things may be repeated for example building the code or uh, deploying the code on several systems so we're going to repeat the deployment of code on several systems two examples of value stream steps the top one and the bottom one at the top one you could have a value stream at a very high level it's always okay to define a value stream with a um, wider or a more higher level granularity or you may want to define a value stream or map a value stream with more detailed granularity so the upper one is more higher level granularity so it just starts with a demand from a user or a customer for a, maybe a new service so requirements gathering happens as a first step designing the new service happens as the second step then building the new service and launching the new service and afterward the value is delivered to the customer on the other hand if you are thinking about having a very detailed value stream map then you may have to do the bottom way so gather requirements is split further into several parts right and then baselining it um, so get requirements from users from customers from other stakeholders and then baseline or agree to a version uh, or agree on a specific requirements a sign off uh, a version controlled sign off and design similarly broken down into several parts and it may go back and forth these circles so how show how activities can go loop again until things are refined and clear and eventually it goes forward and ends in delivering value so stakeholders who are creating the value stream map have to design have to decide how much should the the depth of the value stream map should be should it be superficial or should it be in depth we'll look very specifically for the two the value streams of uh, how to create a new service and how to provide user support you need to know the steps for those two value streams for the exam
therefore a few good things to conclude or to provoke ourselves with the value stream needs to consider all activities in the end-to-end -end value stream that takes demand and helps to create value co-create value so all activities which are uh, happening in a value stream must be depicted in a value stream and the value stream may have activity from different teams different departments which is uh, obvious because when the requirements gathering is done we may have uh, business analysts doing that when we're doing the design we will have technical experts when we are uh, testing it we may have people from the test uh, organization and we are going to launch it we may need some people from marketing also therefore all those people are responsible for different steps within the value stream so as you can see here some of the tests uh, the functions or the groups are mentioned here and one important thing about the value stream is let's say we are we all of us here are part of a value stream so it's not just about what i am going to do what you're going to do uh, because each one of them each one of us even though we do impact the overall journey it's important that the overall journey is also excellent for the customer so the value stream must be designed to enhance the entire customer journey not the individual touch points so if a user is calling up for uh, with an incident the service desk must provide excellent touch point and afterwards they may escalate let's say to level two support then level two support must provide an excellent touch point but you see in between the the capturing the incident and then escalating to the level two there may be a time gap so that is also part of the customer's journey so that while you know we tell the user that uh, we are escalating it but the customer would like to have an overall good experience so individual touch points are important but the overall experience is also important otherwise the customer the user or customer the consumer that is doesn't know um, they may say yeah you know overall uh, the service desk person was excellent and the resolution was excellent but overall i am not i was i'm not happy because um, um, i had some difficulty obtaining information so or understanding the status so the journey is a bit spoiled even though individuals might have done properly so the linkages between the various touch points is also important and lastly involve all stakeholders in the chain as early as possible so whoever need to be involved should be involved um, in the value chain activity and thereby in uh, defining the value stream itself before we move on to more things about the value stream let's look a very simple look at what else happens in a value stream and as you know by now a value stream may have one or more value chain activities so if you look at the value chain activity engage engage you have have learned at the foundation level it's about uh, transparency and having a relationship with stakeholders yeah getting feedback providing feedback and those kind of things so look at some examples how engagement can happen in different areas in different situations if it's supplier management practice then if feedback is provided to the supplier then it is an engagement example in the relationship management when the provider uh, and the consumer are discussing opportunities then it is again engagement in service level management when the service levels are reviewed periodically between the provider and the customer it's again engagement similarly in service desk management when the user input is captured by the service desk personnel it's again an engagement so engagement can take several forms even though the intention of engagement remains the same yeah basically it's about transparency and maintaining relationship and so on but look at the use of the engage activity in different situations meaning wherein different situations bring in different practices so though we are going to look at value stream maps in a little more detail very soon we look at those steps required for designing a new service we look at steps for how to handle a user request or an incident input let's first do it in a very simple manner now that you know the purpose of engage how it can engage how the engagement can happen with different practices so demand let's say there is an incident so a user would like to report an incident that's the actual situation or the demand it's also known as trigger of a value stream a demand can be sometimes in the form of an opportunity like a customer asking for a new service 
or it can be in the form of some other trigger like a user incident. A user incident is not really a true demand, but it's kind of a trigger which is because of something broken. So demand and trigger may be used synonymously with slightly different meanings. Step one, the user provides incident information. Therefore, each value chain activity, if you recollect from foundation training, every value chain activity takes some inputs and transforms that to outputs using certain practices. So you see the same here, the engage value chain activity takes the user input about the incident and it, uh, an incident record gets created as an output. However, to, to do that, service desk practice will be utilized and maybe information security management practice could also be utilized. If it's an information security incident, then there may be additional policies to be, to be adhered to to handle the information security incident. Yeah, therefore, uh, and that's, that's how you see the linkage between um, uh, one SVC activity and the practices within that SVC activity. Moving on to step two. Now the incident record becomes the input and in step two, deliver and support is triggered as a value chain activity. And this may trigger incident management as well as information security management. But the purpose here is different. The purpose is to deliver and support, meaning uh, provide, um, resolve and uh, ensure the system is operational. Yeah, and those things. And with the use of these two practices, using the, uh, because for information security incident, we may need to have additional competent people or different procedure. And uh, different procedure is, is always generally used for information security incidents compared to normal incidents. Therefore, and the output of this is incident status and workaround applied you know, or some kind of a temporary fix applied. And as soon as this happens, value is delivered. The user is able to continue work again. So see the complete chain here from demand to value using two steps, engage, deliver, support. Each of these steps using an SVC activity and each of these SVC activities working along with one or more practices. And therefore a value stream is a combination of one or more of the six activities in the SVC, which may use 34 practices total. In a situation you may use maybe three or four practices or we don't know maybe even more maybe even 10 practices or in the worst case all 34 practices but that will be very unusual or rare and every situation has a unique value stream and with our understanding we come back to how to describe a value stream? 